Hey, what up, slackers? How are you guys doing? Today I'm going to be doing something a little different, and I think I'll be doing this from this point on. So every time that I'm about to read um, one of these Wikipedia entries that I find interesting, I will also be incorporating some words that I find um, difficult to difficult to grasp as a non-native English speaker. So what I mean by that is English is a it's an easy language to learn, but it's a pretty tough language to master. And with that, I would say a lot of the differences between a native speaker versus someone who picked up the language later in their lives is their mastery of these slangs or phrases that is more formally called idioms. Idioms, you just have to kind of know it by heart um, before you can, you know, really use it and to be able to, um, yeah, to be, to, be able to, to be able to use it in your daily speech. And therefore, it's useful to, to hear them to be used in the context in the in the context that they're supposed to be used and um, hopefully that helps with the speech. I'm only doing this for myself so uh, I, I find these phrases really nice and really helpful to improve the flow of my speech and I hope for all you you know fobs or non fobs or whatever um, out there if you like it, then feel free to also use these phrases or idioms. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Battle of Somme. So this is one of the bloodiest battles in the history of modern, or I should, I should just say, in modern history. Um, and it basically is one of the darkest days of the British Army, where it has lost tens of thousands of people um, repetitively, so uh, repetitively, days after day, they didn't change their strategy, they didn't adapt the way that modern warfare um, should be, yeah, should be conducted in the face of modern weaponry um, in terms of machine guns and how do, how do you deal with machine guns and new technologies and you shouldn't just have your soldiers marching forward to their death. Anyway, let me get to the story on Wikipedia. Yeah, this is such a long entry, so I'm just going to read the first part of it, or the, the summary of it. And hopefully you get the idea of what a brutal war this has been. I mean, not a war. This is part of the First World War. So what a brutal battle and how kind of people in the commanding positions are not really adapting to the reality of warfare. And this is the consequence. The Battle of Somme, also known as the Somme Offensive, was a battle of the First World War fought by the... Uh, sorry, I just realized that I haven't even told everybody what my... Um, Idioms of the day is or are. So, idioms of the day. Um, the first one is beat around the bush. So, yeah, this term generally refers to someone who would uh, uh, just avoid talking about the main problem, but instead uh, just, yeah, talk about something that is a little more on the peripheral. Not addressing the problem directly. Actually, I really, I highly recommend you, if you're <laughs> interested, to turn to Urban Dictionary of this term. And there are some very interesting interpretations of what beat around the bush. Actually, if you think about it, beating around the bush, where this term initially comes from, you, you probably hear this quite often, but it's kind of 
interesting to, to think about where it could have come from. What does around the bush mean? Is it like the shrubs outside? I That's how I thought about it, but no. Actually, I think the bush actually means the bush down there. Um, yeah, and beating around the bush probably originated from someone's dirty mind to not, yeah, to, to thinking about not just cutting the bush down or something like that. But what we're talking about here is is most conventional meaning of avoiding talking about the main problem. The second term is take the bull by the horns. This one also, okay, so the meaning of this is actually directly opposite, almost directly opposite from beating around the bush, and it just means that someone shows courage to confront a difficult situation and tackle it instead of beating around the bush. But if you also think about this, taking the bull by its horns also sounds like a dirty foreplay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there is a urban dictionary term for this one, but you're free to look it up. The third one is if you hear some if you hear some shocking news, it's gonna send you into a tailspin. I, I really like the imagery that is given off by this phrase send you or send them into a tailspin. That just means that whatever broke out, whatever news broke out has turned the situation into a total chaos. The fourth one is when you hear people say we rub off on each other. I like we, yeah, we're buddies and we rub off on each other. That just means that because of your close relationship, you influence each other in the way that you behave or the way that you act. For example, um, Kobe and LeBron rub off on each other on their greatness. I think that's, um, that's pretty much what this term means. And the last one is the jury's still out. This one's used very commonly. That just means something is yet to be decided and what I'm going to do is to try to incorporate these five terms into my reading um, as I'm going over the Battle of Song. So the Battle of Song, also known as the Song Offensive, was a battle of the First World War fought by the armies of the British Empire and the French Third Republic against the German Empire. It took place between 1st of July and 18th November 1916 on both sides of the upper reaches of the River Somme in France. The battle was also was intended to hasten a victory for the Allies. More than 3 million men fought in the battle and 1 million men were wounded or killed, making it one of the deadliest battles in human history. So, one in three did not come out of this battle in one piece, which is at that 33% casualty rate, that makes this battle a meat grinder. Um, let me go back and check out what were the five terms again. Um, I can say the jury is still out on whether the Battle of Somme is one of the, de okay, I take that back. The jury is still out on whether the Battle of Somme is the deadliest battle in history because there were several up there that had also very high casualty in comparison to this one, but it is definitely one of the deadliest ones, but the jury is still out on whether it is the deadliest one. The next, um, okay. So, the French and the British had committed themselves to an offensive on the Somme during the Chantilly Conference in December 1915, 
the Allies agreed upon a strategy of combined offensive against the Central Powers in 1916 by the French, Russian, British, and Italian armies, with the Somme Offensive as the Franco-British contribution. Uh, hold on, so the Allies. The Allies here, I believe, means the Germans, the uh, Austrians, and what was later to be known as the Axis in World War II. Whereas the Central Powers are the French, the British, the Russians, the Italians. Yeah, the term Allies was used in, in, world, in describing World War I and World War II in the, opposite, yeah, in the opposite camp. So it could be confusing, but here the Allies refers to the Germans and the Austrians. Um, or not just Austrians, but um, Austrian-Hungarian Empire, which is much a much bigger territory than than the modern day modern day Austria. Um, uh, let's see. Initial plans called for the French army to undertake the main part of the Somme offensive, supported on the northern flank by the Fourth Army of the British Expeditionary Force (BEF). When the Imperial German Army began the Battle of Verdun on Meus Me 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 on February 21, 1916, French commanders diverted many of the divisions intended for the Somme, and the supporting attack by the British became the principal effort. The supporting is in quotes, meaning here... The British was not in supporting of the French or in support of the French, but the British was the main force of the attack. The British troops on the Somme comprised a mixture of remains of the pre-war army, the territorial force, and the Kitchener's army, a force of wartime volunteers. Um, yeah, so the Kitchener's army, I think, is pretty famous for... It's also known as the Kitchener's Fob. It was at least initially of all uh, a all voluntary army of the British Army um, following the outbreak of the hostilities in the First World War. So, yeah, a lot of people who volunteered for the war and died there. It's kind of a sad thing to to learn. On the first day of the Somme, July 1st, the German 2nd Army suffered a serious defeat opposite the French 6th Army from Nocacor en Santere, south of the Somme, to Maricor on the north bank by the 4th Army from Maricor to the vicinity of the Albert Bapum Road. The 57,470 casualties suffered by the British, including 19,240 killed, were the worst in the history of the British Army. So in a single day, nearly 20,000 British soldiers were killed. Most of the British casualties were suffered on the front between Albert Bapum Road and Gamacord to the to the north, which was the area where principal German defensive effort Schwerpunkt was made. The battle became notable for the importance of air power and the first use of the tank in September, but these were a product of new technology and exceedingly unreliable. So, okay, the tank, the tank being a new technology nowadays, I mean, we think of war, we think of air, airplanes, tanks, but back then, that was when the tanks are, were first deployed in the battlefield, and 
yeah, they were unreliable. And I, I do believe the British did come up with the tank, the idea of the tank first. And soon, I guess the Germans start building it. And that's basically the main um, workhorse of the, the sec in the Second World War. By the end of the battle, the British and the French enforce... Hold on. Let me go back. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I'm trying, let, let me give it a try. Instead of beating around the bush, the British forces went directly into the German, uh, into the firepower, or toward the German firepower, um, and suffered heavy casualties. I don't think that is the right way to use the term being beat around the bush, but you get the idea. Um, it's, yeah, it's mainly in a more conversational context that would be more appropriate, but yeah, here, yeah, you get the idea. At the end of the battle, the British and the French forces had penetrated six miles, ten or ten kilometers, into German-occupied territory along the majority of the front. Their largest territorial gain since the First Battle of Marne, Marne in 1916. The operational objectives of the Anglo-French armies were unfulfilled as they failed to capture Prome and Bapalme where German armies maintained their positions over the winter. British attacks in Ancre Valley resumed in January 1917 and forced the Germans into local withdrawals to reserve lines in February before the scheduled retirement by about 25 miles or 40 kilometers in Operation Albridge to the Hindenburg Line in March 1917. The debate continues over the necessity, significance, and effects of the battle. Um, yeah, here I, actually I can use, and that's exactly what the term the jury is still out uh, means. So the jury is still out whether the Battle of Somme has served its necessity um, at the cost of so many lives in the grand scheme of the First World War. Can I use any of the other terms? How about this? By sending in heavy artillery and bombarding the German defense line in the trenches, the British army has thought that it has already taken the bull by its horns and taken out the German, the majority of the German defense. Little did they know that a lot of the bombs didn't go off and the German defense was still relatively more or less intact when they began, when the British soldiers began charging toward the, bar the barbed wire um, and the, what is called the no man's land. That just means the kind of the, the separation between the British trenches and the German trenches, or the Allied trenches and the Central Power trenches. Um, so when the soldiers crossed the no man's land, they were they, had, they were met by the barbed wires, and there were only several openings, um, you know, along a mile, let's say a, a mile of barbed wire. There were only several openings. Uh, that they can get through because those were the portions that were damaged or cut that, that they, the soldiers can pour through. However, that basically created an aggregate of bodies where the machine guns don't even have to aim at. They can just spray some bullets toward those gaps or toward those holes along the barbed wire and, and yeah, you can count on those bullets hitting flesh. So... And that's why the casualty was so high. Um, what am I still missing here? Okay. In 
instead of yeah, instead of the the the, cas the high casualty, uh, the astronomical casualty actually at by the standard of that time, instead of sending the British commanders into a tailspin, I don't think this is how you how you're supposed to use this term. Um, maybe um, sending okay. How about this? I can imagine, I can totally imagine that the news on the frontline losses has sent the families of soldiers back at home into a tailspin. Bingo. That was, I think that was a much better use than how I initially thought I was going to use this phrase. And we rub off on each other. Um... I guess I can say about the British and the Germans or the uh, the the two the two opposing sides of the battle they rub off on each other on how the battle strategy gets developed because for example the tanks were first invented on the by the British side but I I believe by the end of the war, the Germans were well off, um, or were already well on their way to, uh, to build their own tanks and to deploy those into the, into the battlefield as well. So definitely when opposing armies face each other in war, they rub off on each other. But honestly, that's not how, um, this term is uh, should normally be used because it generally refers to too close friends or two uh, really tight associates that rub off on each other and learn and improve and influence each other. So that was today's story and um, I'm going to try to keep this format of trying to incorporate some idiom, uh, idioms into into my uh, wiki story reading in the future as well. And let's see how long I can keep this one up. I'm signing off. Adios.